Hi guys. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I had to put on my reaching hat. Hear me out. Hi. Thanks for clicking. I definitely am going to be making a video about George Floyd. I've been doing some research and there's more to the story, a lot more. What happened in the first video, I found excruciating to watch because it was so long and drawn out and unnecessary. And you know, his knee was still on his neck after he stopped moving for minutes. And I really don't think this should be a, a, a divisive issue. We should be united right now. As a country, we should be together. I just wish we were more united as a country instead of divided. These are the United States of America. And um, it's just a sad state of affairs in our country right now. I know that some people want to escape and you know I try to provide entertainment and report and research and all that for you guys but at the same time I don't want to be oblivious and ignore things because they're uncomfortable and that's the nature of the game on YouTube you're, you're not gonna make everybody happy and in the end you just have to follow your heart okay so um, I'm gonna try to keep my energy up but I'll be honest with you guys I am feeling a little bit deflated but um i promised you guys i was going to do a part three and so that's what i'm going to do let's get into it i wanted to ask you guys and please let me know in the comments below what true crime cases or conspiracies do you want me to cover i would love to know what you guys are interested in so this is the third and final part of the melanie gibb interview i need you guys to buckle up because we're going to crazy town and it's going to be a bumpy ride. I have my helmet. So the video starts with Melanie being asked about Tammy, Tammy's death. What did you think when you saw that she had died? I thought, oh my gosh, she died. That's what they said was going to happen. I wonder what happened. I didn't know how they did it, but I knew it was part of the plan that, that she was supposed to pass away. I mean, other people knew she was supposed to pass away because, you know, Chad knew this information for, you know, quite a, quite a while. When she did die, though, and they went to Hawaii and got married so quickly, did you, did you question that or was that just part of the plan? Well, that was part of their plan. Their whole goal was to get together because, you know, they expressed to me many times that Tammy would be okay with this as she passed on. She may not remember it now, but as she passed on, she had a mission to fulfill on that side. And so um, he felt that that was... They felt, they both felt that that was where she was supposed to go. She was move on and, and fulfill her mission. So it didn't seem um, unusual to either one of them that, you know, she passed on because that was the plan is that they were going to be together. Do you guys remember the police report that Tammy filed shortly after Brandon Boudreau was shot at? She also was shot at and they missed. She said that she was in her garage in the driveway and a car pulled up a guy pointed a what looked like a rifle at her fired but the gun didn't go off and they sped and drove off in the police report it seemed like the police thought it may have been a prank or a bb gun or something like that so nothing really came from it except the fact that very shortly after she died in her sleep no autopsy at the moment so I, I kind of wish that they asked her about that and whether anybody in the circle talked about that or mentioned that because it's very similar to what happened to Brandon. Then we move on to Alex's death. Listen to what she says. And then Alex died. Yes, that was definitely a mystery for me. What did you think had happened to Alex? I had many different ideas. I thought, did he kill himself? Did he... Um, he did realize that I was going to tell the police. He did, that was made known to him. And so I thought maybe he really, once he heard my um, doubt in all of this, maybe he got, maybe his heart was pricked. Maybe he realized that, oh my goodness, I've been a part of something that's not good. And 
I mean, those are different thoughts that I had. Or maybe, you know, somebody could have tried to kill him. I didn't, I didn't know. I just really did not know. I was guessing all over the place, just like you were probably. How in the world did he die? I really didn't know. I mean, I asked the police, but they didn't tell me. So she confirmed that Alex knew that she was going to speak to the authorities. I don't know, I think that could be a motive for wanting Alex gone. Then she's asked what she thinks about the autopsy results, that Alex had a natural death, and look at how she reacts. Well, we know that Alex died, according to the autopsy, of a blood clot in his lung. Mm -hmm. Do you think there was anything suspicious there? I don't know. I don't know. So let me give you guys a little backstory. Now, I found an article that was dated January 10th, 2020, and it's talking about an incident that occurred a year ago from when the article was published, so about early 2019. The article interviews a neighbor of Alex Cox who says that Lori and Alex had a huge fight in the middle of the street back when Lori used to live with her brother in another area of Arizona. The fight is described as a knockdown, drag out fight. And the neighbor said, quote, I heard this huge commotion. People were coming out in the street to watch what was going on. I thought they must be husband and wife because it was the sort of fight you don't normally have with your sister. She was screaming at him, accusing him of bringing disgrace on their family. I joked with my wife that I thought he might have killed her after their argument. Supposedly, Lori never came back. Their relationship is weird. Lori and her brother Alex, it's weird. It's weird, it's weird, it's weird, I don't know, I don't know. And then a few months later, Charles sends Alex an email. He trusted Alex, I don't know why. He sends Alex this email telling him about emails he discovered between Lori and Chad and that he was gonna expose them. This is really weird, but Lori was pretending to be Charles in the emails that she was sending Chad, okay? So, but it's clear from the emails that Chad knows that it's Lori. In this email, Charles explains this to Alex, that Lori is emailing Chad and she's pretending to be him. Are you still with me? Let me read you the email that Lori sent Chad. Quote, I would gladly fly you down here early next week. You could stay in our guest room like before. I hate to take you away from your family, but I would definitely make it worth your time. With admiration, Charles, right? So she's pretending to be Charles. I hate to take you away from your family, but I would definitely make it worth your time. I feel like that is a little sexual. So in the email that Charles wrote Alex, he says, quote, I'm not sure of the relationship with her and Chad Daybell, but they are up to something. She will not explain it. I am going to send it to Chad Daybell's wife. Her name is Tammy, and I found her email address on their website too. I've got her cell number too. To me, that is motive. I could so see Alex running and telling Lori who ran and told Chad and then they all get together and are like, no, we have to shut this down. It's so sad knowing that Charles sent this email to Alex like as a confidant, not knowing that this would be the guy that's going to kill him. It's like he was speaking to the enemy and he didn't even know. That's the little backstory I want you to know about the fight and the email. Now let's get back to the interview. Where do you think the kids are? They're not on this planet anymore. I don't think they are. That's my personal opinion. I know Tylee's a very strong-willed individual and she's capable of making a phone call if she needs to call. And she hasn't reached out to anybody and let, let anybody know she's alive. I can't imagine she would be quiet the whole time. I, I, I can't imagine it. Um, JJ's a handful. He wouldn't have his medication with him, so how could she take care of him? you know, Tylee and, Tylee and him, how could they take care of each other? And it doesn't add up if, if, you know, if they're in a safe place, why is she in Hawaii having a great time on her honeymoon when her children are running for safety that are hiding in safety? That, that doesn't even make sense. There you have it. 
I mean, at this point, do I even need the hat? Then she's asked if she thinks Alex was involved. Do you think Alex was somehow involved in, in wherever they are in their disappearance? I think it's possible. And then the topic shifts to Brandon Boudreaux. How did you find out that somebody had taken a shot at him? So that's interesting. Um, I didn't know he was shot at until um, I was asked um, to go check on his house and drive by his house to see if um, their children, you know, Brandon's children were there. And who asked you to do that? Um, Alex and Melanie. I talked to a neighbor and he said that they had moved out two weeks ago. And he said there was uh, no children there. And he said, I'm really glad they moved on because somebody tried to shoot at Brandon. And I said, really? So anyway, I went back and shared this with Alex and he said, oh yeah. Yeah, we heard about that. He got shot at, but we believe that somebody um, tried to take a shot at it to make it look like it was us. So so. Alex volunteered and said, they're trying to make people think it was me. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did you think when you heard that? I was like, wow, I, whoa. I, it was very, I, I'm just surprised. I was very surprised by it. I didn't quite know what to think about that. I thought that was unusual. Do you think it was Alex? Um, from what I have heard, it does sound like it. Do you know of anybody else that might have tried to do that? What I really don't like is the way Melanie's like, I thought it was, I thought it was unusual. Yeah, it was unusual. Oh, you, you know what? I thought it was unusual. Like, how many unusual things do you have to see and witness before you think to yourself, what the hell is going on here? And then the topic shifts to the end times. July 22nd, 2020. Is the world going to end that day? No, the world's not going to end. But Lori believes it will, or at least believed it and chat right so let me just back up for a little bit to help you understand a little bit by why all these people died and all these people started missing that's kind of sloppy work you know it's obvious that the kids are missing so wouldn't you be concerned that people would notice that was my thought I was like why but the belief system was is that she believed that there was going to be an earthquake that was going to hit so large in utah that um by the end of 2019 that they they wouldn't notice anything in her personal life going on so if she were if she were to marry chad for example she said that like probably a year before that you know so when chad and i get married someday nobody will notice we're, we're married because of the earthquake and the different destruction going on this is the freaky thing there actually was a huge earthquake in utah but it wasn't exactly what chad predicted so chad predicted it at the end of 2019 but it actually happened in march of 2020. i did a little digging into chad so chad was talking about this earthquake all the way back in 2017. how do i know that well did you know that chad has a website yes it's cdaybell.com and i can never unread what i read on that website let me show you the first thing you see is Standing in Holy Places, the official website of author Chad Dumbbell. I mean, sorry, excuse me, Daybell. And then you see here he has a lot of little blog posts. The most recent one is in August 24th, 2019, right before the kids went missing. And he talks about his books, his different book series that he has. He has different trilogies and stuff. And then you get to a blog post and in that blog post he mentions the earthquake march 7th 2017 and he talks about here's an update on my writing projects i'm close to finishing nobody cares nobody cares nobody cares and then he goes two key events must happen before it's released his horrible book the u.s presidential election and a major earthquake in the western united states one down one to go so he had been predicting this at least three years before the earthquake happened. I, <laughs> I looked over here and I saw that there was a link to his Amazon store. Buy Chad Daybell's books through Amazon.com. And I go to Amazon. <clears throat> and what do I find? The last book all the way at the end 
is one foot in the grave the strange but true adventures of a cemetery sexton by chad daybell this was published on july 27 2019 two months before the children go missing less than two months actually chad used to be a grave digger when he was in college listen to the description of this book this is a collection of true graveyard stories you won't be able to put down or ever forget Join a real cemetery sexton as he introduces you to such characters as Eddie, a lockpicking ghost, Pamela, an error-prone psychic, a relentless coffin-chasing cow, grandmas who steal decorations, brazen graveside lovers, that's them too, a rock band's memorable visit, Mrs. Robinson and her buried leg. These and many other memorable characters both dead and alive, are found within these pages. The author shares his own cemetery blunders and bizarre experiences along with his dealings with meddling spirits. He even gives tips on how to outfox the Grim Reaper. This is a must read for anyone who isn't in the ground already. That is so creepy. I almost I almost bought it and then I was like, no, it's $3.49. So I almost bought it and then I was like, no, I'm not giving him $3.49. For what? No. I just found that so creepy that he's a grave digger. He wrote a book about it and all these mishaps in the graveyard. And it's like, dude, no. <laughs> Back to the interview. Here is Melanie feeling sorry for Lori. I think about her, like what her daily life is and how she's not free. That just must be very painful for her. I can't even imagine what she's going through. It will be hard for me to see her in her jail outfit and you know, not be able to look as pretty as she'd want to be. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of fun times together. We've laughed a lot. And I love her. And I'm so sorry that she's been so deceived by Chad and that she's also been deceived by not just Chad but I believe other people on the other side of the veil pretending to be good when they're not. I know you're suffering. I think of you every day in the jail alone without Chad who you love and I know that's really painful for you. There's still hope. That's what I'd want to say to you. I have no words. I have no words. Then you get the creepiest visual, I think, of this whole thing, which is Lori and the cookies after Tammy's funeral. Listen. I do know that they did meet Lori. I didn't know, oh, if I'm speaking to them, I didn't know that you met Lori. Um, that's how close, just to let you know how close I am to the situation. I know that she had them all over her, her town home for cookies, you know, um, after the funeral, when she came back to town. And, um, and I know they fell in love with her, according to her. Unbelievable. I had read a comment somewhere talking about Melanie wanted to be a sister wife of Chad and Lori and at first I was like what really but listen to how she talks about Chad and tell me what you think about that I really like Chad I think he's a good guy still he's a nice man yeah I, I mean I like him as a person but his teachings they're dangerous if he's watching what do you say to him I still care for you and Lori. And this is really painful what you're going through. But God has always taught us to be honest. There's no exceptions to those rules. And when you walk with peace, even if you're guilty and you confess, there's a peace that comes from telling the truth. She's asked, why do you think 
Lori and Chad did this. What did Chad and Lori want? Power, followers? Was it about sex? Was it about money? Was it about God? What was their ultimate goal, do you think? Oh, that's a really personal thing. It's hard to share because of she shared a lot of personal things with me, and I hate to share that out loud. What well, can you hard. tell us that she that you? But I'll just say with? that it was a fatal attraction. So, what do you think? What do you think about this whole thing? And also. Don't forget to let me know what cases or conspiracies or things you want me to go digging and looking into for you. I would love to know what you're interested in. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.